Blessings to all and welcome to another episode of Elevate the Mic and I'm your host Max Mupesi. Today we have somebody who wears many hats. Not only does he write, produce, he engineers, he acts and he's going to tell you a lot more about his story. So without further ado, let us all welcome Colossal. How you doing man? What's up bro? Man, 100% feeling well. Thank you for having me man. Absolutely. It's a, it's a pleasure uh, you know to have a chance to talk about what I love to do. Mm -hmm. Hey, man, it's an honor. Thank Got you for it. having me, man. And when you say you love to do, what is it that you currently love to do at this very moment? Um, my my favorite out of all the things that I do has to be the writing and the producing of the music. So I rap in French. Uh, you know, French is my, my base, but I do also rap in English. I just uh, brought out an EP uh, a month ago, 26th of April, mm -hmm. Fondation. Uh, it's six songs uh, produced by Nino Lucania. He's a uh, Belgium producer, mm. and uh, that's it. Like the 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 last song on the project is an English song. rap. So I wanted to really show that I can do multiple things. Mm. But uh, to get back to the question, yeah, I mean I do a lot of things, but of course rapping, writing, and producing are my favorites of the whole process. Okay, and how did that come about? When did you start making music, or even who inspired you to get into that? Okay, man, we that gotta lane. go. We gotta go way back. <laughs> mm. Yeah, early two thousands. Mm. Um, <clears throat> two of my boys, Khalil Rukos and his uh, buddy Alex Vance, they were in a group called Kubaka, mm. and they're the ones that basically put me on. Uh, 20 years ago mm -hmm. and from there I went on learn how to produce myself learn how to uh, record myself etc etc mm. so it's been a 20-year process mm. for me to reach like this state where I just signed a nice uh, distribution deal with uh, symphonic congratulations man. thank you very much so the album is out it's doing very well Fondation Colossal Nino Lucania mm. you guys go check it out Yes, I had a chance to I'll skim through your Instagram page and you've been promoting it. That's it. You've been promoting. I want to touch on that because uh, before I, I let you, I didn't cut you off intentionally. What I noticed is that sometimes art could be, could be so sacred to a point where a person does not necessarily want to share it. So what makes you tell yourself, you know, I got to better myself and just keep promoting it? despite the fact that I got to keep it I sacred. was like that for years mm. where, I mean, I have over 500 songs in my catalog and I only started releasing music in 2020. Mm. So since 2020, I've released off, let's say my songs and my singer song, probably 60 songs. Mm. But there comes a time in every artist, you know, a journey where you've done the work mm -hmm. and now it's about you know you have to put it out you have to see what it does mm -hmm. and what you realize is that songs that you like mm -hmm. are not necessarily the songs that the people are gonna like so right. that's why you have to put it out and you let them choose mm -hmm. and and you get the feedback since you have all the stats you see what songs perform well mm -hmm. so it, it'll give you an idea of what future songs to make or what direction you're going to take with your art you know mm. but um for me honestly i have so much music that i'm like okay i have to put it all out mm. because we never know you know there's I, i've known people that haven't that had great talent mm. were making music for years and never released the music right. so you know, the, the music mm. has no value when it's in your computer. Mm. And no, you know about it, probably your friends know about it, mm. but if the whole world, if it's not out, it has no value. Mm. So, you know, I, I advise all artists, especially today with the world we live in where mm. you can do it step by step, distribute your music and, and, and do all the paperwork, there's no there's no more excuse i say no excuses just put it out whatsoever you, you have to yes got it and could you tell us about your upbringing uh, where did you grow up and how was it before you even starting to get into music all right uh i grew up on the south shore of uh montreal longay okay um growing up i was a basketball kid so mm -hmm. i played basketball i thought you were gonna say a bad kid 
Uh, <laughs> no, I wasn't a bad kid. I was a good kid. Man. Okay, good. I, I was a good kid. Uh, I played ball um, probably um, when I was 15 or 16. I switched school from uh, South Shore and I went to play in uh, Montreal at Lucien Paget, which okay. had a uh, sport étude. Yeah, man. So I played with greats. I played with uh, Samuel D'Alembert that okay. went to play in the NBA. Manix, Oriental, mm. uh, you know, Thierry Lindor, big players. Mm. And, um, of course, it, it didn't pan out. But what I want to tell people is that I know that the talent that I had in basketball is the same talent that I have for music. It's just that when I was younger, I didn't have any big brothers. I, ne I didn't have nobody to, to steer me, to show mm. me how to train. So I didn't go all the way with the potential that I had. Mm. So when I started making music and I realized that, yo, know, it's the kind of the same energy. Mm. And I was like, okay, music, I will go all in. Mm. I will give all the effort, I will sacrifice, and I'm, I'll try to see where that potential leads me, you know? Mm. And um, I mean, we're here 20 years later and, and things are finally starting to, to, to roll for me. I'm, mm. you know, I, got a song that's on the radio rolling serious exam we got you know a little distribution deal so yeah. things are finally like moving in the direction i always wanted mm. so uh, it what i want to tell people is it's a long-term project yeah. art is a long-term project i understand people when you do sports you have a short window mm. where you can do the thing but art, since it's mental, spiritual, mm. the mental and spiritual aspects are infinite. Mm. So if you keep working, you keep growing, it's, it's never ending. Mm. So today, 20 years later from when I started, I'm the best that I've ever been. Mm. I'm right now writing my best lyrics. I'm right now producing my best music, mm. right now. Just to show that when you stack the years, you stack the work, it, it has to end up somewhere. It has to do something. You, you're, you're obviously gonna uh, become someone, and you're gonna, you know, something has to happen if you're focused and dedicated and committed to what you do. Mm. Let me ask you this, because I like you talking about evolving, growing. You know, you become, you realize you're becoming a lot better these days as an artist, mm. contrary to when you started. Could you tell us how? you manage to not be so far well what happens is that because well, you could grow to a point where your core audience no longer relates mm. so how do you manage to grow to a point where you make it relatable to your core audience mm. and not necessarily having to compromise or dumb down how you think these days i mean i think it's all about the foundation right mm. once you establish the foundation of who you are and what is your artistic direction and what you're about, mm. you grow into that mm. aspect. So your music sh shouldn't right, become right, right, weird right, to right. your fans because no, no, they're gonna see the, the mm. progression, the, the and, and this is the advantage that artists have to have, like, like I was telling you before off camera, mm. I have more than four, 500 songs in my mm. catalog. And in these songs, that's it. You you hear the progression. Mm. So some songs, I was at a state. Now, so mm. it allows the 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 fans to grow with you. It allows them to to get into your mind, you know, because that's what music is. Is they, you know, you get a glimpse of who I am. You get a glimpse of, of the soul, the direction. Mm. So um, yeah, it's. Uh, my my hashtag is educate, entertain, and inspire. Mm. So this is what all my music is about. Mm. So it's very large, but you know uh, that's why I'm colossal. Mm, colossal, you okay. Know? And why why the name colossal? And also, I want to ask you after that question: out of all of the projects that you release thus far, mm. which one's your favorite and why? Okay, so colossal. It's crazy because the name with time took another meaning. Mm -hmm. So at first, 20 years ago, when I chose the name, it was specifically um, inspired by an X-Men character, mm -hmm. Colossus. Okay. And 
of course, in French, you got the end of the word, which is sale, mm. dirty. So it gives it kind of an edge. Mm. That's how it started. Mm. But with time, I realized that colossal means that it's bigger than me. Mm. What I'm doing, the message, it has to be bigger than me. So that's why I have to, my content is more, let's say, of course, conscious, spiritual, mm. educate, entertain, inspire, mm. you know? So with time, the name made more sense. Mm. And, and, and I grew into the name and it became something else that I did not calculate in the beginning, you know? Mm. So that's for that. The second question about the favorite album. Um, I have an album, uh, volume two, that I released on uh, at the end of uh, 2022. Mm. 15 songs that I produced, all the songs. I wrote most of it. Uh, since it was my first official album, right. It's, it's my favorite, you know? Mm. Of course, every song, every last project, I just released a project. Of course, it's my favorite right now because it's, it's my energy of the year right. and, and it's current. But, uh, you know, projects, music are basically like kids, right? You, you love them all. They all have something. It's unconditional love. So, mm. But because it's my first album, I have to say my first project, mm. volume two, uh, ça s'appelle euh, « Beaucoup sont appelés, mais peu sont choisis mm. », volume 2, « L'appel », que ça mm. s'appelle « Colossal ». You guys go check it out, man. Beaucoup, de, beaucoup sont appelés, peu sont choisis. Many are called, mm. but yeah. few are chosen. C'est ça, OK, yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what made, you, what made you go with that title, knowing that you had to keep evolving as an artist? I, I, I feel like, you know, it's like... Um, it's it, it's just part of my message of mm. colossal of educate entertain inspire uh, i i think it just envelops and engulfs the whole the whole colossal theme of of having a purpose man mm. this is for me i i, I do music i do conscious rap mm. mostly and it, it just has to have a purpose has to have a message mm. you know this is this is what colossal means now it's bigger than me, it's bigger than nature, it, it has to be universal. Mm -hmm. So that's how I try to steer the direction of what I do, you know? And when did you fall in love with hip hop? When did you realize, you know what, that's it, that's what I need to do, that's, what, that's what's calling me? It's, it's funny because when I started with uh, my friends, I was telling you, Khalil, and usually it's, it's always like that in life where people see things in you that you don't see for yourself mm. so i was just a friend to khalil i would go to his studio every day i would watch him produce mm. but i always had an ear and i remember being in the studio with him and always telling yo yo use that sound mm. okay no no slow that down so so it was in me intuitively just exactly like that. Shit. but and until the day where he was like okay i want some french rappers you rap mm. and i was like okay <laughs> but then you put it back when i put back all the story that i grew up i mean i was born in the early 80s so i grew up with hip-hop mm. and i had the chance of having a family that i have family all over the states mm. so ever since i was probably six seven years old until i was probably 18 years old mm. every summer I would go to a family member. So mm. New York, Miami, Boston was the, the main three places mm. that I went. So I was always that, that kid coming back in the summer with the latest gear, right. with the music before everybody, with the slang. So mm. so I, I I was I was built for this. You probably were you probably spent some time you probably spent so much time there that they also they also thought you were American at one point. Like, hey. Of course. And I would go and my cousin would tell me, yeah, yeah, that's my cousin from Canada. And they would like, this guy. Yeah, be because of course, yeah. especially 20 years ago, they think of Canada. They think, you know, you got the lumberjack yeah. thing. And then you, no, no, no. The, the guys look at me and they're like, oh, shit, he, he just like us. Right. Of course, of course, you know. But um, that's it. That's it. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah. Got it. And what would you say has been 
some of the best moments you spent in time in the states that were able to shape your character coming here in Montreal, or even telling yourself, you know, Oof. I gotta improve. Whether it's my writing or my I have to approach. give all the props to my cousins in um, Miami. Grass, mm -hmm. Ox, Reggie, I love you guys. I mean, I remember it was, uh, I was 13 or 14 years old. Mm -hmm. And um, back then, there was, uh, I don't know, I don't know how old you are, if you know uh, Luke, you know Luke? Yeah, Uncle Luke. Yeah, yeah Uncle Luke. <laughs> so Uncle Luke, back then, he had a club in Miami called Pack Jam. Okay. And it was a 18 and younger club. Wow. So that's the first time I was 14 I went to a club my cousin with my cousins got drunk for the first time and it was just <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Yeah, there's some things I, I don't want to say right now, but the way that things were... I was like, were, before Freaknik. The, the, exactly. Right, 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 right. Exactly. Right. Yeah, I know oh. what you're talking about, though. Sweet. Bro. You got it. That's it. It was crazy. Imagine a 14-year-old kid, you're in there, yeah, and you're like, oh, yeah, we can do all that. Mm. <laughs> so the inspiration that they gave me, uh, of course, just the music, I was always... Like I said, I was always that kid that had the music before everybody that was... I, I was in the culture mm. over there in the States doing it, going to the clubs, speaking with people. So all that influence, I know it had a, a profound effect on me and, mm. and inspiration. And that's why I feel like the type of hip-hop that I do is very source based because because of that I, I feel i grew up with hip-hop you know mm. hip-hop is 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 50 years old this year is the 50th anniversary right. i'm 40 so mm. it's like you know mm. so you really saw the evolution yeah really. yeah yeah i grew up with it you know so mm. I, the love that i have for it the, the the passion and i would say even before i started making music that's it from those trips every year mm the love that i had for the culture i could say i was probably 14 15 and and hip-hop was like yeah i was hip-hop already mm. and then when you start making the music it goes to another level mm. but yeah it started real early for me um and it's like i can say today i love it more than ever because mm. i'm i'm doing it right mm. so it's it's different once you you know, you listen to it and you're a fan, but once you get into it and you start doing it, it just, I, you know, it's my favorite thing in the world, bro. That's it. It's like, it's therapeutical. It's, mm. that's it. Therapeutical, especially because if you're an artist, I mean, me, it was, it, my, my uh, trajectory, my journey is probably going to be most artists' journeys, which mm. is, the long road. Mm. I didn't get signed when I was 20 years mm. old. My first, no, 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 no. It took years for me to learn step by step how to write, how to produce, how to record myself. Mm. Now, how to bring out music, distribute, commercialize, promote. Mm. I learned every fast. Of course, not every artist will go through that but mm -hmm. that's the type of guy i am i love to do everything mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. i took the long road and what i want to tell people is 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 that art mm -hmm. is a long-term project mm -hmm. you, you you can't expect for it to happen right away if it does happen right away mm -hmm. it'll stop right away also mm -hmm. you need to learn certain basics in order to 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 last and to understand how to make moves and you know of course i, I was looking for mentors for years mm. and i never found the mentors mm. and i realized i have to be my own mentor because mm. what i do is is very specific i i know there's not many people that do everything that i do so it's uh, it's a long it's a long journey but mm. It makes sense. Mm. Today, when I look at everything that I've gone through and, and to see, it all makes sense. I understand, oh, yeah, I had to learn this, mm. this, and that so that now I can make those decisions that will bring me where I want to go, you know? Mm. And it's all about <laughs> where, what you want to do with this, right? right? I started this a long time ago, and it's a personal journey. I want to be the 
best I can be. Mm-hmm. So, That's it. you know, it's all about what you want to do with this. But if you're about this life, right. it's it's not easy. It's mm-hmm. not easy, but it's worth it. You right, because it's also easy. It's easy to get fucked over in the game. It's easy to, you know, run into a manager or even a an agent, a booking agent that could just screw you over exactly. just for some dollars. Exactly, because most artists, you start out, and it's we all say the same thing. I just want to make music. Mm. I just want to make art. Yeah, but it's called the music business, the music industry. Mm. And once you get in, you realize that the industry part the business part is almost more important than the music mm. because as a testimony you can see the music that's out there today which is compared to right. the quality is not as good mm. but because the business has become so big mm. you know so again it depends on what you want to do mm. where you want to go with this in all of your experiences and years of doing what you do, what has been a bittersweet, a bittersweet lesson that you've had to, to swallow and knowing that, okay, you know what, I'm just going to have to deal with it, but I'm still going to keep moving forward? The bittersweet lesson is you, you have to be, you're going to be alone mm. to do this because I've started with a lot of people and the commitment that is needed in order to make this work mm. most people are not willing to put the sacrifices mm. most people are not willing to man just money wise the investment that you have to people are not willing to invest that mm. type of money in them then the, the money is one thing but the time that you have to put in just to be quote unquote good because everybody starts and you're not good at mm-hmm. the beginning. So the time that you have to take to write, 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 do over, mm-hmm. over, over, over again. And and that's not and that's, for a few weeks and months. It's weeks, months, and years. And I was going to say, and that's if you like the engineer. The engineer keeps repeating, hey, go again. You're like, yeah, come yeah, on, man. <laughs> yeah. So it takes time. It takes time. And that's it. It's, it's basically all up to you, all up to the artist to see, mm-hmm. am I willing to sacrifice time, money, whatever it is to to do this because um, yeah, you're not you're not going to make any money. It's going to be you're going to be in the red for years mm. in the beginning. But then when it starts working, mm. trust trust me, like I've 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 gotten those first <laughs> mm. spins checked from from radios and and Looks okay, good. okay. Mm. I could see that all that investment. Like I, I could tell you guys. Like I started investing mm. in 2006 is when I bought my first MPC, mm. and back then 2006, the MPC that I bought was uh, 1600, 1600. Okay. Damn. So that was my first music investment mm. in 2006. Since then, mm. paying studios and paying. Yo, I've invested, yo. Hundreds of thousands. Exactly. Right? <laughs> in, in 15 years, I've put in that. and all of that, yeah. So yeah. are you willing to do that for years, to be in the red for years? You know, I thank God for the mother that I have. Mm. Because if it wasn't for my moms, bro, I'd be on the street. Sure. Long time. Because I tried a lot of things, you waste money here and there, and it doesn't work. And if you don't have some type of help, if I didn't have my mom where I could, okay, there was a point where I couldn't pay the studio and I couldn't pay an apartment. So I left my apartment and I went back to live with my mom. That's Mm. the sacrifice that I had to do. Mm. But I was willing to do it because that's what I want to do, you know? Mm. So it's it's a lonely road, man, once Mm. you really get into it. And you're lucky if you find people that are as dedicated and as committed as you. So that's, for me, the bittersweet thing about this is mm. I would have loved to have a lot of my friends in, but hey, man. Everybody can't go. Everybody can't go. <laughs> right. Do you see a future with Montreal English and French rap scene on the same 
standard or on the same level or coexisting? It should, right? right? It's of course it should because it, it's it started here with the English rap before the French rap, mm. and of course we're in Quebec, so they're you know it's French first and and and, but it's I mean. Talent-wise, right. Montreal has always been filled up with incredible artists. Over the years, I've worked with incredible artists. A lot of them have never brought out music. Mm. And, and I'm telling you, I know a few. I would put these guys against anybody. Mm. But you have never heard of them. So the talent is here. It's just we need the structures. We need... <laughs> Um, the establishments to, mm -hmm. to, to, you know, really put it forward because mm -hmm. the talent is here. So that should be like a no-brainer mm -hmm. that they invest in the scene to make it because right now, mm -hmm. Quebec and Montreal, it, we're, yeah. it's, it's, it's going up. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. In, going yeah. in the right direction. That, that, I was going to say, uh, my bad to cut you off, that's why there's these festivals like Franco, you know, all of these festivals are popping up because they they realize there's a demand. Come, y a une demand. The people exactly. need that. Exactly. Of, you know? of course, man. Because the <clears throat> talent, the music is here. The artists are here. French, English. Mm. Now, that's it. To have the people, the 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 organized people that to come together and to really be like, yo, let's put this. Because French wise, yo, we got yeah. people. We could go to France. We could. English-wise, we got talent here. I mean, it's happening already. There are already artists here that are collaborating with guys from the States and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I think it should be, we should already be at another level. Yeah. Here in Quebec, we're always 10 years back of uh, everybody. Yeah. Just the fact that we're in 2024 right. and there is no hip-hop urban radio station mm -hmm with a 24-hour hip-hop right. that that's crazy mm. there's there's 24-hour like there's hip-hop radio stations in other provinces here in mm. canada but not here in quebec and mm. you know you hip-hop is undeniable hip-hop is the biggest seller the most popular mm. the music that everybody wants to listen to and Just. wants to do so mm. You know, I, I, of course, I'm trying to put myself in a position where I'll be able to bring in those talents, and 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 mm -hmm. that's it. Mm -hmm. I'm bilingual, but that's it. I know French artists, I know English artists, mm -hmm. I, so of course I, I'll try to do it at a small scale, and and and. But yeah, it's definitely something that artists mm -hmm. have to come together mm -hmm. to 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 make this happen because, of course, we're always going to be stronger together than separate you know got it could you also share a win well you've probably have, you've have a multiple wins right when it comes down to music or even music uh, music business would could you share a recent win that you know made you second guess your 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 talent or even second guess your ability but you overcame by just winning that make me second guess my I mean I have to be honest man I'm I'm very confident in what I do like mm -hmm. I'm I've I've worked so much at this that I've I'm I'm convinced mm -hmm. of of what I have of the I'm just convinced of the work that I put in right mm -hmm. so, so for me so it was no, always there's no re like really second guessing whatsoever there's, there's always no like, okay. no there's no second guessing i always knew for me that it was just a matter of time mm. just meeting the right people the right circumstances that's why i never stopped working mm. because i knew nah, it's it's impossible that i do this i know i'm i'm, I'm good at what i do mm. so i have to continue so for me it was always I'm, i'll have my moment i'll have mm. my time and I would advise artists to, to, to really think like that. Think that, long term. That's yeah, the thing. It's long term right. thinking. This is what music is, he, or art in general, is always long term, you know? So hmm. I, I can't say anything that really. That made you, you know? Second guess? Mm. No, no. Mm. Like, I, 
as far as wins, mm -hmm. I can say like, you know, the last few months, getting uh, a, a few uh, spins on Sirius XM, it's, it's what what that has done is, it changed my vision as to understanding the music business. Mm -hmm. So I'm I I love rap rap, but the music that plays on the radio is that is getting me paid mm -hmm. is R and B. Mm. So now it it's like okay, am I gonna start just writing R and B? No no no, of course mm -hmm. not. But it's just a balance. Mm -hmm. So eighty percent of what I do is gonna be the rap. Mm -hmm. But every now and then I have to feed. You have to feed the beast. You mm -hmm. have to play the game, quote right. unquote, right? So just that understanding for me, it it puts things in perspectives and it and it makes it easier because now I know exactly me, my type of music, what to do, what type of music to put out without, quote unquote, selling out or, mm -hmm. you know, being out of character. No, mm -hmm. no, no. It's, it's always the same type, but you learn, you learn the business, man. Mm -hmm. You learn the business. It, it, How and to that, maneuver. Yeah, 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 yeah. And at the end of the day, it's, it's a business, man. So, okay, if I can do these more uh quote unquote commercial songs to get my spins that will help me finance what i want to do mm. after that my albums of, of rap but you you play with both worlds and that's where as an artist you have to be multitasked you have mm. to be you can't just stay in one lane mm. right you have to be able to expand try different things and you know you, you see what works i saw rick rubin's Shout out to Rick Rubin, one of the legends, mm. Hall of Famers in the music business. He said something very interesting. He said, as an artist or even as a creative, you got to learn how to support yourself. And I was like, what does he mean by that? Uh, by you explaining that, that's what I understood is like, you're able to have like, let's say a nine to five job or something that's suitable that could help you in a moment while it pays off. It, you invest in your dreams. You invest in your exactly. in your passion. Exactly. You have to. Yeah, you, know? you know, before that, I was working Uber for years. Mm. I'm lucky now. I've had a few uh, voiceover gigs and stuff like that. So mm. you have to do something else on the side in, in order to just to survive, you know. Mm. So, you know, I, I've, I, I've been listening to Dame Dash for, mm. and Dame Dash is always about the independent being the boss. Yeah. And I think one of his messages that got misconstrued is, is the thing about having jobs. Mm. As an artist, you got to have a job, just a money. The job is, is it serves its purpose, right? Mm. It's for you to survive while you invest in your dream and mm. in what you want to do. That's, that's the basics. You have mm. to have some type of way to, to, to feed yourself and because music is not free. Mm. Right, you gotta buy beats. You gotta record. You gotta every every single uh, aspect. Every you gotta pay. Mm. So if you don't have any money to invest in music, eh, you're <laughs> not gonna be able good, to. Good to, luck. Yeah, yeah, good <laughs> luck. You know, and it, it makes sense to why, but based on what I understand, to why you never really had issues of second guessing yourself because you had a long term vision and you believed in yourself. So having that long term vision is already quote unquote like a shield, make making you it's protecting you from any kind of harm, any kind of uh, you know, second guessing thoughts. So I was like, okay, you know what, I went through this. It's all right. I'm gonna figure it out in the next few months, next few years. And that's it. Plus yeah. I had the chance also uh years ago to to go to a Conservatoire La Salle, which was a, a theater school, mm. and I learned what you guys are doing here. Really? I did that. Camera, being the, in the regie. So I've touched everything, mm. and I basically love every aspect of the process. So I, again, that's not for everybody, but I love it so much that I learned every aspect. Mm. So now when I do my videos, I'm the one that's directing, scripting. Mm. I get the footage. I do the editing myself. Mm. So not many people will do all that, but all right. I love the process, you know? So now I make songs, and from the time I make a song, I already see mm. the video. I already know what I want to do with the video, you know? Mm. So that's another way of 
of cutting costs also when you don't have money is you, you go learn it yourself. Mm. That's why that's why I started most because when I first started I didn't have any money. Mm. So okay. how do I get beats, man? I, let me get free programs online and start making my own beats. Mm. Let me start recording myself, learning how to all that to cut costs. Mm. So you went through yeah every single moment taught you not only how to improve certain skill sets but you were able to use always use your your finances wisely too because you're not going to necessarily spend something knowing that you could do yourself you're not going to spend money on somebody exactly. somebody else knowing that you could do it yourself That's and it. then if you hire that person it's like nipsey hustle once said he said he learned how to do it himself this way let's say he hires an engineer he's like no i know how to do this they I'll, can't yeah they can't mess with you right. because you know the job you know what it costs you know how much time it takes you know right mm. so that's a great advantage because mm. that's it you, you that's where you boss up mm. and nobody can't mess with you because you know man I, i've done the job i could do it i that's know what it. it is i know how much time it takes i know how much it costs I, mm. so sit your ass down for now let me no, take no, it, no, that's <laughs> it that's it you know? All right. Could you tell us about, well, could you share a story or a moment in your career that made you realize, you know what, everybody can't go? Man. Okay, I'm going to tell that story without saying the Bashing names, the person, okay. Right, yeah. right. Um, exactly, everybody can't go. There was an artist, man, that I... I, I loved, I, I saw that artist as a baby brother for me. Mm. And um, I took him in, produced, I made a whole like a EP for him. Mm. So I produced, recorded, man, I'm, I, I was the executive producer because I, I gave him the direction. I was, man, I gave him, all he had to do is mm. just write the raps, and then I took care of everything. Did the mixing, the mastering, da 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 da. Mm. We were supposed to cut everything 50-50. Mm. And then when it was time to release, mm. I saw that there was some shady dealings and mm. he basically tried to cut me out of the deal. And cut me out of the deal and take everything and, and right. then, so that's where you realize that one, the the, the <laughs> It's a business. Mm. So doing things out of love for people and for free, you realize that when, when you do things for free for people, most of the time they're not going to see the value in it. Mm. And they're going to take you for granted and try to, you know, mess, mess you up, you know. So, mm. it, it, of course, it hasn't stopped me from working with other people, but... Mm set a standard now that's like, hey, it all right we're doing this and, and and that's it like now especially with what i went through recently also now i understand that if i'm gonna work with somebody if i'm gonna produce we're gonna be good we have to write contracts now. Mm. all right i i you know i accept to do this you accepted so we're both committed mm. we both have money to put in to invest mm. there's certain topics lines that have to be well understood by both parties mm. so that's it man there's no sadly there's no friends in, in, in music you know mm. it's, it's highly competitive people you know will, will, will try to step on you so that they can go up mm. it's uh good going back to what i was saying earlier it's 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 a lonely it's a lonely game man it's mm. i'm I tried, I tried, yeah. but that's when again I see like everything makes sense. That's why my record company is called Solitaire Records. Solitaire. So it's soul, but it's solitaire. It's also solo. Mm. I come to realize that man, I have to. I just have to do it myself. You mm. know, I have to do it myself until a certain level, and then you hire the right people. That's people it. That, that's that it. align with your values yes, and your beliefs. Yes, yes, but Got there's it. a certain part of the journey that you have to do by, by yourself, yourself to yeah. figure yeah. yourself out to figure the game out yeah. you have to it's, it's, it's important because let's just say a person is telling themselves you know what I, I need a team every time they get they, they get fucked over I need a team I need a team but then they might repeat the same mistakes 
they might not realize certain things about themselves had they had they just fall back fell back for a moment and you know introspect everything that's else it. but and, for the and, most part that's it yeah and, and and learn it because that's the chance that we have today mm. everything is out there Mm. For you, to, if you want to learn how to distribute your music, you can learn that. If you want to learn where to go register all your stuff so you yeah. get paid, it's out there now. That's why there's no excuses, no excuses and it's man. easier than ever to do it. That's why the overall quality has come down because now it's, of course, everybody and their mama can make music, so of course the level is going to come down. Mm. But the quality would always. Trump. Rise to the top, yeah. always, man. That's it. So, you know, it, it, it's out there, people. You just have to do the work mm. because everything is there today. Like, if I compare it to even to like, let's say, 10 years ago, just 10 years ago, mm. it wasn't doable like this. You didn't have all the platforms and the independent distribution platform for you to, so you, you, you were kind of. Limited. You had to yeah. to go buy a team, go get a label, go. Mm. Today, you don't have that anymore. Mm. You can learn it, and that's the that's what every artist today. That's your job. You have to learn how to distribute yourself, mm. learn where to go register, so that when it works, mm. and you go meet up the the big labels, the big distribute, you know the business, mm. and they can't. You know, they they'll, can't screw they'll, you. They'll need you more than you need them. Exactly. Yeah, that's exactly. good. That's good. Could you tell us one thing you would tell a young Colossal who just started writing? One advice you would give that person? For the writing, I would say, because I remember how I, for years, I I had so many, like, my standards were always the highest. Like I, I always wanted to, to be at the level of the best mm -hmm. artists. And I remember for years having those artists and that standard, mm -hmm. I was stuck. I, I, I would write three, four lines mm -hmm. and then I would get stuck because I was like, ah, it has to be good mm -hmm. like him, ha, ha, right. ha. And when I finally understood that I can't be X, Y, and Z, mm -hmm. And when I realized that I have something mm. that they don't have. Mm. And when I realized that, that set me free. Mm. So it's all about finding yourself, your voice, your direction. Mm. And that only comes through repetition. Mm. That only comes through writing songs every day, recording the songs, listening to yourself, mm. and doing it over and over and over. And after a while, it's 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 just gonna click. You're just gonna get it. You get okay, yeah. This is who I am. Mm. This is what I talk about, and the writing is gonna be. So so the advice would be just practice makes perfect, mm. and freedom, right? Mm -hmm. uh, of course, everybody. You, we have those standards, those artists, those quote unquote idols that you. But you can't do what they do. So you have to find your special element that that will make you different from everybody else, you know, mm. and, and, and just work on that, work on that. Got it. Be, be yourself, be different, and just do the work. Mm. At the end of the day, it's always about doing, doing the, the work. work. Mm. Doing the work. No excuses. Get, no, to, get, to, get to work. That's it. And... What's a goal that you wish to accomplish within the next five years that's been in the back of your mind? Um, honestly, okay. I want to get a, a, a big movie role. That's mm. like, I, I know that music is always, um, how do you say, uh, un tremplin. Yeah, right, right. Right, so the, the music is, is going to allow you to, so mm. now I started doing voiceover. Mm. And of course, the the end goal is always to be to do the acting, mm -hmm. and of course, I I do my own videos and stuff. But I also want to do like short movies, mm -hmm. my own little short movies and things like that. So it's I think it's it's and it has to be with the acting because the music I'm always gonna do music. 
Um, of course, I want to do my thing rapping, and then I want to be more in the back and just produce and, and, and thing. Mm -hmm. But for me, yeah, that's that's the bigger the biggest dream. I'm always going to do music, but the bigger dream is the acting stuff that I really want to get in also. Got it. What's one thing you wish people would remember Colossal for once when it's when it's all when said it's and all done? All said and done. Yeah. I wanna. I want people to 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 remember that. That's it. Colossal talked the talk, and he walked the walk. Also, mm. I was all in, dedicated to the art, um, and you know, at the end of the day, it, it, it's about making a difference. It's about you know leaving the art better than it was when you first got it. Right. Mm. So that's that's what I want. Uh, it's it's all about evolution, the betterment of you know art culture, mm. um, and of course you know you want to be remembered for for being great, you know, mm. for for doing this at the highest level. Uh, that's yeah, that's of course that's one of my wishes. That's what I'm working for. You that's know? It. I'm a, you know, and and everybody, it's the same thing for everybody on earth. We get one chance, one chance at life. Mm. So. You're here to do something special. That's what I believe. I believe mm. we're all we all have something special that we can do, and the our jobs is to spend the time that you have here to develop and to to to, to you know make that potential come out. Mm, that's that's what Colossal is. Colossal is about potential realized. You know. Mm, got it. Okay. Basically. You've had the chance before we leave. You've had the chance to perform at the 50th anniversary of hip hop last year and you did it with Rain Man, right? Rain Man, shout out uh, to Rain Man. Skillless. Yes. Shout out to these guys of course, legends Rain Man in the game. Uh you know, I don't have a lot of featureings, mm -hmm. but this was a featuring that I was Special. very proud of because I remember before I I, I rapped, I was listening to to Rain Man, you know? Mm -hmm. So I remember when he uh Yuri when he came to my studio last year and he was recording in the booth and I had that moment mm. where I'm listening to his voice and I'm like, oh shit, yo, this, this is the guy. From... Mm. And I'm like, wow, okay, life is, you know, it's a full circle moment, you know? Mm. So, yeah, man, it was, it was a great experience. Of course, I'd love to, 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 to go and perform if it's possible again. I have a lot of new music since then. Mm. So, uh, yeah, man. Perfect. So that's what you're looking forward to, like having more performances on stages like that or even? Of course, of course. Like uh, right now, um, that's basically what I'm looking for. That's the last thing I'm missing right now is a booking agent mm. for to get me more shows and more, you know, more opportunities to be seen and heard, you know? Perfect. Yeah. That's what's up, man. Yeah, man. I mean, at the end of the day, oh, absolutely. Sure. It's all good. Definitely going to give you a dive for sure. Okay. At the end of the day, man, what I could sense is that you live, breathe, live, breathe, and sleep music, creativity, and you know, living your your authentic truth, your truth, and that's something that's that's gonna transpire for many years and decades. So just keep on keeping on, keep on doing what you're doing, and it's it's a, it's always gonna elevate certain people. And that's what the goal is to elevate the mindset and the skill sets of individuals who are part of the hip hop community. So if you had a few last words to anybody to elevate their minds or even the skill sets, what would you say? Um, I mean, that's that's what Colossal is about. Elevation, being the best that you can be. Uh, my hashtag is educate, entertain, inspire, educate, divertir, et inspire. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what it's all about. Being the best you can be and making a difference in people's lives. Um, I feel lucky to be able to do music and to have a voice, right? Mm. So I've been influenced, I've had friends, and I understand that having a voice is, is it's serious business. Mm. And you cannot misuse that gift. So anybody that has a voice, you have to use it for the betterment of humanity, man. That's, mm. you know, or else the gift becomes a curse. Mm. You know, so that's a bar right there. Yeah, bro. All so right. Use the gift, man. Make make the world better. Make yourself better, and that's 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 Colossal's mission. Amazing. You know? 
Absolutely. It was amazing to have you here. Pleasure. Yo, thank chopping you again. Up. It was a pleasure. As you can see, bro, I could go. I, I love I love music. I love to talk about what I do. I could do this for hours, man. So thank you for having me, mm -hmm. allowing me to talk about what I love to do. Mm -hmm. um, check check me out, people. Yeah. Check it moi, Colossal. Uh, just brought out an EP last month, Fondation. Six songs. Yes, the first five songs are in French. The last song is in English. Um, you know, just especially that album is boom bap, hip hop. That's it. Big beats, rhymes, uh, you know, uh, hip hop at its purest form. That's that's my specialty. That's what I love to do. Mm -hmm. and that's what I bring to the table. There you have it. Another episode of Elevate the Mic, where we elevate the mindsets and skill sets of individuals who are part of the hip hop community. Love.